And we're back with more Everlasting Summer. Uh, we made our way outside. I darted a final glaze, glance at Alyssa. And yeah, coming into it, you'd be like, oh, what am I coming into? Well, it's kind of where I lifted off from the last time, so... Uh, in case some of you might have forgotten or seen this part. Yeah, apparently Alyssa was... We found Alyssa outside kind of hanging here, so... Apparently we have another death on our hands, so... But we still don't know who the culprit is, so... <laughs> what I saw now... What I saw now didn't, uh... Send me spawning on the ground. Although my heart was racing practically. I was feeling sick and dizzy and my stomach hurt. We were hanging about five meters above the ground. Several negatives tied together and I was filled with time around her foot. I will say this ground has actually been a little longer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but, you know... But then again, she did really have choices in a few other days, so maybe that's kind of explains what's going on here. Bulging eyes, protruding tongue, uh, creature, creature factions already at work on the body. I have no idea what this was supposed to be, but okay. It looked like she didn't die a couple of hours ago, but at least a couple of days. An expression of agony and the human suffering was probably because of the face. What if these are all fake bodies? I don't know, it's just something that kind of came to mind. It occurred that she didn't have done such a thing to herself. You never know what it is. My God, he came up with all this. Maybe we are in hell. <laughs> uh, at least he might have such a way from the diabolical scene, dragging the others along. <laughs> she's, she's still there. Asked Masha, not letting go of my hand. I've just nodded. Who? Uh, Alyssa. Lena cried out loud and burst in tears. Not really sure what the slight delay is from. Okay. Masha embraced her and tried to comfort her. What happened? What happened to her? Something just lagging. Uh, Buddy Rotter with a faltering tongue. Unless if that's the gay doing this, I'm pretty sure it isn't though. Not really sure what that was from. I bet you don't want to know that. For a while, I just stood there and looked at the moon. Nina was sobbing, Rotter was pissing in circles around me, so Boston sat down the bed and I buried the face in her hands. Okay, it's time. I said quietly, yet never to do. We can't stay here. I walked to Marsha and leaned over and took her She raised her eyes, gave her tears, at me and me. Then we slowly proceeded to the bus stop. Night has fallen on the floor. Along the way, I noticed that the grasshoppers were almost quiet. Keep it silent for some time, now they resumed their nasty song, but this time it was much quieter and I might say a little bit more respectful. In the daytime, progressive noise changed to a nocturne, violin, and orchestra. Is there any chance they're conscious about what's going on here? Of course, it was, if we assume that there are grasshoppers in there too, who <laughs> knows? The end of the bus stop is stop. Hesitating. So where are we going? Asked Masha, wiping her tears. Okay, we already tried to go into the right. Let's go to the left. But there's no town there. Uh, just a couple of days ago, there was no camp to the right. Maybe we shouldn't. Nina stopped quietly. We have no choice. I won't stay here any longer. And yeah, they are still trying to leave. We were just about to get moving when we heard noises approaching us from far away. I strained my eyes and caught a glimpse of someone coming down the, here down the road. A bus? A slain router would enjoy his voice. Maybe I should have put more energy into it. I don't know. Shut up, you fool. That's not a bus. People are approaching. I'm doing this at exactly like 4 in the afternoon, so I have my time. So in case you guys see in the time of whatever this is uploaded to for... Trust me, it's not at night. <laughs> I don't know. I hissed at him. So, usually when it's kind of during the day, I didn't really have too much going on with me. So, I, I just figured, you know what, I'll just get this out. Just get a part done out of the way. And, uh, 
upload it. So whatever you guys get, it, it'll be when you get it. So yeah. Lots of people, said Masha anxiously. It was utterly clear that we shouldn't stay here any longer. I turned around and saw someone approaching us down the road from the other direction too. The noise was getting louder. The chirping of grasshoppers, although not their usual one, a much louder, distorted version as if it had been passed through a guitar amplifier. Run! I shouted, but nobody moved. <laughs> oh, screw it. I grabbed my shoes and made his hands and turned it off to the game. Girls were floundering in the street. I ended up really dragging them along. I had to dash to the square. I stopped to catch the breath. And only then did I realize that Robert had been left behind. Screw it. I had to go back to get him. Masha screamed and shifted towards the bus stop. Are you nuts? And I pulled her hair and the force of the stop. You would have saw the meat there, same thing. I knew there was probably so violent that I thought my right hand was shaking as a man of age. Keep running. Where to? Don't know, I'm gonna go. I'm sending the ogre to reach out his cabin, wasn't it up? My self-regulation instinct also suggested that we should stay in the open area as well. Just as long as you don't separate and say, hey, you know what, we should split up. Like, they do that a lot, like, certain, you know, stories, like, all the time, right? It's like, uh, Knowing that you got somebody out there, like, okay, you might die. It's like, why did they always split up? It's like, I have no idea. Maybe it's, I guess, to make more so that they can, uh, because I guess you have to have ways where people are going to die. It's like, but it's like, I would never do that in real life. You know, honestly, we say that all the time, don't we? We just say, like, I would never do such and such, or, you know, we do that a lot. But yet, somehow, we end up in a situation because... You wouldn't ever really expect if anything's going to happen to you, right? So it's kind of, it's one of those things where, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so when we watch certain movies, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the killer's there. Why would you be alone there? It's like, uh, the idea anyway. I, I think it's more of like, okay, it's like ideas. Of what what could you be scared of? You know, the idea of going into a basement is like, most people would say it's like kind of scary. Not really, for me. I don't really think anything of it. Like, ha! <laughs> I don't know. I held girls' hands tightly. But for some reason, they use Facebook a lot when it comes to like, horror movies and stuff like that because they figured, like, it's a dark place and it's usually kind of cold down there. So it's like, there you go. I don't know. They ran with difficulty, especially Lena, who was swaying and weaving. She fell a few times, but I quickly picked her up, spurred her on with shouts, and dragged her off. Passing through the trees uh, was the hardest part. Though the full moon was shining up in the sky, in the dark it was, I was still constantly running into snags, branches, falling into pits. I could imagine. Are you just running like if you don't even see anything around you? You guys, they're just running in random directions. I don't know. Nestles were slashing my legs, and leaves were hitting me in the face. Leaves painful scratches. I'm guessing because of seeing Alicia's body, I gu I'm guessing this is why they're doing all this running. But still, it's just kind of interesting how this is played out. My heart was pounding heavily. I, well, I mentioned this a while ago that I, it felt like the story just kind of shifted. It became something completely different. Like, it feels a little bit... Uh, like a different, like I'm reading a different PN, even though it's the same one that I've been reading all this time. It's like, <laughs> it's interesting. And the relationship with Miku, I still haven't figured out what happened with that because, like, it seemed like it got put on the back burner a little bit. I don't know. But she's still around. It's just that uh, the focus is not really on her. It's just all this other stuff that's going on around, the, uh, around that, you know. My heart was pounding heavily, every breath I took whistled painfully in my lungs, the blood was pounding so heavily in my head that it seemed like my skull was ready to burst from my, the pressure at any moment. The sound in my body, my legs killed and killed by the chest. That's the other thing too, people run in different directions, they never look in the direction that they're running in, running, you know, right? So they just tend to run into shit, like, who does that? It's like... You can still keep your eyes where they need to be, right? 
At last, we went out into a clearing and stopped. Exhausted, the girls fell to the ground, and I sat on a fallen tree. Who were they? People or demons? Or something else? And where was that triple sound coming from? I don't know. I could make a nod in the twilight, but that was probably for the best. Birds make their way to the Oh, well, maybe I'm not going to sleep, though. So I don't know. After I slightly recovered my senses, I walked up to the girl. Nina was lying dead right on the ground. Seems like she completely lost it. Lost it was sitting and hugging her knees and walking from side to side. We gotta do something. I said as I sat down. It's too late. We gotta die. She whispered in a hollow voice. We're still alive, but is there still hope? No, there's nothing now. It's all over. Now put my eyes around her and have a tight. No, it's not. Like I said, if this whole thing is just a plot on her part, like I said before, that's a brilliant writing, I gotta say. But, so far, she has not been revealed as such, or they're not even making it seem remotely obvious that it's her. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. <laughs> uh, you guys that know about her route, please don't try not to spoil it if you can. I know it gets a little hard not to. <laughs> I sat staring into the darkness of the forest. The grasshoppers could barely be heard now. If not for Masha's labored uh, breathing, I would think I was dead. Forgive me. She whispered quietly. For what? For everything. For me being like that. For whatever we failed to achieve. It's not the right time for that now. I said tenderly. We don't have much time left. So I'd say it's the right time. She looked up at me and faintly smiled. Forgive me. If only I hadn't been so selfish in the first place. I looked into her eyes, her bottomless sorrowful eyes, and I felt a hot tear cross my cheek. Okay. No, it's me who should be sorry. I was totally ignorant of what to say in such a situation. Well, at least to see, we're getting a little bit of something here with these two after all this time. It's like, ah, uh, all that this other stuff was kind of like taking front and center. So at least there's a little bit of some type of focus here. I did so much wrong to her. Caused her so much pain and now, at the last minute, I can't think of anything other than an empty I'm sorry. I was overwhelmed with anger at my helplessness at being unable to protect the only person I helped you. You know, I always loved you. I know. Really? She said quietly. Masha smiled again, although her face was trembling and tears were running down her cheeks. And I still love you. I still would like to know how these two got together. So it's still a mystery of how they just kind of shoehorned them. It's like, you know what? We're not going to show you how they got together. We'll just put them together. It's like, how did, why, how, when does that happen ever, ever in a story? You know, it's like two people end up getting together. You have no clue how they got there. <laughs> I mean, I'm going with it, but I would have liked a little bit more of a build-up to something as opposed to... Because I feel like like they just said, you know what, this is what we're going to do, and this is really what's going on here. You know, I don't... I know. I could stand it. I longed to turn away to close my eyes. But I can't afford weakness at this last minute. I leaned down and kissed her hard. Time stood still for us. Is there anyone else around? Oh, wait, Lena. I mean, Lena's probably sleeping, I've got to guess. This cursed pioneer camp, the dark night, all those hell spawn, and even the bloody grasshoppers just cease to exist. The whole universe ceased to exist. Just two of us were left. Now, wouldn't that be something if, the, if it was that did turn out like that? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> then you would definitely know that it's definitely Miku because... It's like, you know what, I I had a plan to take everyone out one by one. I killed them all so I could be with you. Why? I, I don't want those other girls. It's like, well, I had to make sure they, they weren't going to be, you know, be be, uh, be competition kind of thing. It's just, like I said, the thing with Yandere's is they, you know, they have very bizarre ways of taking out people, you know, I don't know. That's when I was almost willing to believe that it was all just a bad dream. The woods came alive with rustling. 
The foliage far away quivered and a swarm of vague silhouettes emerged from the darkness. Okay. I still couldn't make them out, but I was certain that they are the same creature that we'd seen at the bus stop. Oh, really? My whole body was stricken with dismay. I was afraid to breathe. So, this is how it ends, said Masha quietly and held me tighter. No, this is not the end. Suddenly, I realized that I will fight for her till the last drop of my blood. Okay. As long as there is a slightest chance of survival. I jumped up, tugged off the ground, and rushed over to Lena. <laughs> she was lying deathly pale with her eyes open, and she didn't seem to understand what was happening at all. I started shaking her by the shoulders. Get up. There was no reaction. I gave her a few slaps, and she let out a dull moan. Get up, uh, no. Damn. Well, you could have gave me a different kind of eyes, uh, stare there. When you do those eyes, they're a little bit creepy, I gotta say. As I roused Lena, she stared at me with a spaced out look. That doesn't look spaced out. That's more like, uh, I'm giving you, like, this, I don't know, just, you never know what's gonna happen with these eyes look. <laughs> I don't know. Let's run. I grabbed the girls by their hands and rushed aimlessly. The further from them, the better. I was tumbling down, getting up again, helping Lena and Masha to get up too. Hewing through the dense foliage, eventually the noise faded, leaving us with only the quiet chirping of grasshoppers. The light flickered in the distance. Oh, so we're coming back to this old camp here. Soon enough, we came out into a small clearing. Completely sheltered by the trees. There was a building that somehow looked like a kindergarten. Yeah, this was the old camp. So somehow we ended up back here. What is that? I'm gonna guess. Everything is gonna reverse back to the previous... Somehow he's gonna go in there. Although, well, he's with her. He's with these two, so it might not change. But I guess we'll see what that... But if my hunch is correct... They're going to go in there, all of a sudden everything's going to change and it's going to be back to normal the way it was before previously. I'd be curious of how the relationship with those two would be at that point. That'd be interesting. The building of the old camp, said Lita faintly. But again, that's only just a guess on my part. It seems that she was slowly coming back to her senses. I stopped hesitating. But it is kind of interesting that they are here of all places. So it's just interesting there. Because when everything changed, uh, this is the place we came to when we went alone. Sure, it was quite naive to think that we could find shelter there. It was obvious that we can't be secure anywhere with all the stuff that's happening. On the other hand, we were on the verge of collapsing. Especially the girls. Hmm. I took a few hesitant steps toward the building when the wrestling from behind... I reached my ears. I froze in my tracks, unable to turn around. Oh, whoop. The rustling was growing louder, and suddenly we heard the diabolical chirp. Oh, my goodness. They all look like Oyana. Jeez. So there's zombie Oyanas all over the place. Good man. Huh. Okay, now I know that the, uh... So where is the real Yana? Because if these are just fakes, uh, or just some, somehow like, or are they clones or something? I don't know. Uh, they're kind of creepy, I would say. I forced myself with a superhuman effort and turned around. The crowd was behind me. A crowd of little girls. Yeah. The ones that look like have a Yana's kind of hair. Uh, if you could make out the hair style, uh, I don't know. I could recognize that anyway. Or rather, a crowd of Ilyanas. Oh, now you mentioned that. They were at least, they were all exactly the same as that Ilyana I saw this morning with the same torn face and horribly uh, disordered spot. And all of them made the same hellish sound, the tripping of grasshoppers and dog ball, the noise that showed my heart. We froze where we stood, unable to take even a single step away. <laughs> what? All of a sudden, one of the Yonas came forward from the crowd and pulled. Is this supposed to be Sebian's head? I don't know. Maybe it's the way I'm looking at it, but it looks like... 
looks like a dead Semyon. Like, because uh, keep in mind, the whole time, the person that we've been, whoever we are, they're referred to as me. So it's like, I don't know. This is interesting. But looking at this face, it certainly looks like uh, Semyon. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> the severed head of Router from behind the back. Is that Router? I did not make that out, but maybe it is. I don't know. It looked like... It looked... Huh. I have no way of taking these words off, otherwise I can get a better look at this face, but... Uh, it's hard to make out, though. It doesn't quite look like it, but maybe it is. I don't know. I thought of Sebian for some reason, though. A grimace of horror was perfectly frozen on his face. I almost fainted as she started to talk. Hi there, Simeon. How are you doing? And because if, so if the yacht is supposed to be like a zombie character right now, I can't voice her like she usually would be. So I obviously I have to voice her differently here. The voice felt like a bullet piercing through my brain. I screamed and fled towards the old camp building, dragging the girls along. <laughs> I must admit that back then I completely stopped thinking of my family. Maybe they were also screaming. Maybe they maybe were shocked by horror. I do not know. The most important thing now is to get as far away as possible from these monsters. We flew into the building and immediately the ground disappeared under our feet and I fell into the darkness. Okay. I awoke in complete darkness. My whole body ached, especially my legs, but somehow I still managed to get up, leaning against the wall. The sound of the Yonianos was nowhere to be heard, which calmed me down a little. I called out in a thin voice. Masha, uh, Lena. I heard a movement nearby, and somebody felt someone gripping my leg. Okay. I instinctively jumped back, but at that, at the same moment, a faint voice came from below. Are we still alive? Seems like it. I helped Masha get up. Suddenly, a bright light fired up a couple of meters away from me. Huh. I leaned against the wall, trembling, but immediately realized that it was Lena. We had turned on a flashlight. Where did that come from? Don't know. Where did you get that? Lena came closer and lit me. I took it, uh, just in case, uh, yesterday. I took the flashlight from her and showed it around. We were in some kind of tunnel. The walls were lined with wires. Unlit lamps were hanging from the ceiling. Where are we? I don't know. Looks like some kind of bomb shelter. I looked up and saw a pretty formidable hole beyond which one could barely make out the hallway of the old camp building. So I'm guessing he forgot he even came in here before. That's funny. The floor had probably rotted with age and we fell down here. So he has no recollection of actually coming into this place. That's kind of funny. Right? At first glance... There was no way to climb back. Too high and there was nothing to grab. Unless that that's the way I'm reading it. I don't know. So what is there? Go further. I asked. Not really expecting an answer. I don't know. But we'll have to check. I shone the flashlight ahead of us and took a few uncertain steps. My whole body was covered in bruises and scratches, but I could still walk. And Lena cried out behind me. What is it? I think I sprained my ankle. I was honestly expecting the next line to be something cliché like leave me behind. I'll only be a burden, but of course she could never say that. Okay, lean on me. I went over to Lena and offered her my shoulder. Oh, soon enough the stone walls gave way to wooden ones and we ended up in some sort of a mine. Let's have a break. Masha Bay. I carefully lowered Lena to the ground and sat down nearby. Well, at least those monsters are nowhere to be seen. But for how long? I sighed heavily and closed my eyes. What do you think is going on here? Masha's voice was trembling, but she still sounded more or less confident. Looks like she's so exhausted and devastated that there is just no strength left for fear. I don't know. And honestly, I don't want to know. But we're going to get out. Definitely. 
I could see her face, but I was sure that she smiled. Suddenly, the flashlight blinked and went out. I hit it with my palm several times. The wall's minds lit up with a dim light once again, and I immediately realized that something was wrong. Lena was nowhere to be found. Lena's disappeared. I whispered. What? Marsha grabbed me by the sleeve and stared at the spot where Lena had been sitting a moment ago. How? Uh, but how? She started to cry quietly. We will die. We will definitely die. I also very much wanted to burst into tears. Darkness surrounded us all around and uh, closing in. The flashlight was gradually dying and with it our chances of survival. Get up. Time to go. The battery will die soon. A couple of minutes later we came to a floor. What the hell? Is this some um, kind of labyrinth too? I uh, hissed under my breath. Let's go back. Uh, maybe. No, no way. Marshall pressed against me even harder. Where to then? I don't know. But we had to choose anyway. And I decided to go right. Really, I'm not going to get a choice here? So here we came to another floor. For some reason I thought maybe they might do that. Here, but maybe not. But there's no other choice that I see in the walkthrough that has anything to do with this part. So I have no clue. Where to now? Well, let's stick to the direction we chose before. Okay. We had been wandering for too long. Uh, we neither had strength nor will left to move on. I was so terribly thirsty I was ready to lick the moisture from off the walls. <laughs> That's just, uh, just a little. Let's sit just a little, uh, a bit. We can't. We must keep going. But just a minute. Masha begged in anguish. Fine. She lowered her head onto my shoulder. The flashlight was blinking more and more often, so I decided to turn it off for now to save the battery. This is it. Okay. I don't know how much time passed. I desperately wanted to sleep. My eyes were closing by themselves. How did we first meet? That was so long way ago. Do you remember? I asked in a whisper. What? Miku's voice was trembling. How we met? Yes. She tried to laugh, but immediately began to cough. I was asleep for a while, okay? Just for a while, or you were asleep through the whole day again? Well, but you will wake me up. Of course. I kissed her and closed my eyes. Oblivion was getting closer, but I didn't care. I was transported back in time to that very day. Where's you now? So, this is going to turn out to be exactly what I was suspecting here. Or maybe. We'll see. My whole body was aching. So how are they going to act if they go back to the way they were? It's going to be interesting. Best my brain couldn't rest peacefully because it was distracted by thousands of signals from my nerve endings. Somehow I rose and woke up Masha. After all, we were planning to survive. How long have I been in this mine? Fork at the fork, tunnel at the tunnel. Masha was whispering something all the time. To the left, to the right, to the left, uh, to the right. <laughs> it seems that I won't be able to handle even more one more turn. I'd imagine not. That'd be a lot of, like, to the left, to the right. Good lord. Sounds like a tongue twister happening in that sentence there. But suddenly the flashlight highlighted a tight passage in the darkness and we soon found ourselves in an open chamber. Look. Masha was pointing somewhere into the darkness. Is Lena even still with them, I kind of wonder? Because it seemed like they kind of, I don't know, what's going on with her there. I flashed the light there and saw an echo chip lying on the ground. Yeah, this is not... No, let's go. At last, we got out of the labyrinth and found ourselves in a small room. What well, this room looks similar to what we found sure before. There were broken bottles all over the floor, pipes stretched along the walls, and at the end of them were rusted boughs. A mess of graffiti was sprawled, uh, scrawled all over the walls. At least it's a change of scenery. 
not much. I mean, other than the wall, this, the, this part here is a little different. But most of it is, looks the same to me, because I came in here a few other times with different routes. I sighed. The flashlight had almost died, and I had to shake it up every 10 seconds to slightly recover the battery. Exhausted, uh, Miku dropped to the floor. We can't stop. I'm sure there is the exit somewhere here. How do you know? I looked at her. She obviously had no energy anymore. Masha was struggling with her exhaustion and could lose consciousness any second. I just know it. I smiled, trying to look encouraging. Well, if so. She leaned against the wall and stood up hardly. Sit here for now. I will see what is further on. I'm afraid. Masha trembled. I'm not going far. She raised her eyes to me, full of hope, and nodded almost imperceptibly. I looked around and noticed a heavy iron door. My attempts to open it came to nothing. It was completely rusted shut. Uh, I wish that pipe was here now. But there was no other choice. I braced my leg on the wall and threw all my weight against the handle. My muscles bulged. My forehead was awash with sweat by a vision dark. But the door didn't budge, just gave up a hollow rattle. It's alright, wait a second. I shot it over to Masha, gasped for breath. I need to find some kind of stick. I ran over to Masha, bent down and smiled. There is definitely an exit behind this door. Huh? She looked at me wearily. I ran out of room and began to scour the mine in search of something suitable. The flashlight was about to die and having blinked its last, it finally went out. That would suck. I panicked and began to blunder around trying to find a way back. That'd be the only thing about it, be the annoying part, is you getting lost, right? Ha! <laughs> However, I kept running into walls and couldn't remember how at all I got here. Masha, Masha. I screamed, hoping that she would hear me. Suddenly, a uh, sound came out from behind me. A light appeared, and my shadow appeared on the ground, stretching far off into the darkness. I was rooted to the spot by fear. I heard a seemingly familiar voice. What's wrong, Sonny? Tala? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I slowly turned around and saw Lena holding a flaming torch in her hand. That's not the part that I'm looking at. It's just face, man. All the time, we've been getting a couple freaky faces from her, and then we get this, right? Yeah, obviously, the torch makes things look kind of interesting here. Ah, oh, man, it's like, ah, uh, she already gave, like, a really very creepy, like, look beforehand two times, twice out, I would should call I should say. And here we're getting another look like this. Good boy. <laughs> Her face was disfigured by an inhuman grin. I've come to you. Yeah. This was the same leader that I saw at the square last evening. Yeah. I the same as in Ogre the Beach and I was Kevin. That was Lena. And at the same time, not Lena. This creature was more like those Ayano. I am coming for you. You, you, uh, who are you? I see that. It's Nina. Don't you recognize me? She burst into deadness laughter. You could play the fuck out about me while having fun with them. I, I, we're stuck in my throat. It's alright, there's nobody left now. What's the two of us? See, you did everything. And, uh, not everything, of course. For a second, her face became guilty, but then she grinned again. Lobby was first. She was always so annoying. She was Miss Reliability. Diligent. Hardworking. Always everywhere. Agree with everyone. Yep. Boy, did she scream when I was tearing off her arms. <sighs> it's a pity you didn't get to see it all. Wow, I didn't recognize it. Maybe you did a good job with that, if that's the case. Because <laughs> I said, like, okay, you're showing me somebody I could barely even make out. I don't know. Her mouth began to tremble, her saliva stripped out of it, and her eyes rolled up. 
Not exactly sure how to voice this character since I'm kind of used to voicing her a certain way. I don't know. But I'm trying, man. It's probably not going too good for me here. And then, listen. Everybody is annoying me. I don't need anyone. Now, she's hanging peacefully in a lot of trees. However, it wasn't easy to look her up there. But it had a much greater effect. How you all scream. <laughs> like pigs in a slaughterhouse. Made a face was just a crack to the sick pleasure. Alright, just get bit sneaky left to deal with. And then it's over. Oh boy. Wow. And you're actually calling her Mickey and not Monster. That's funny. She produced a giant cruiser uh, covered with blood from behind her back. I see it now. Something with blood on it. Well, actually. It seemed to be that she was lost in thought. I don't know what that crap in the form of Rihanna was. Her and the other pioneers were killed by me. But does it really matter now? So how do you explain all of those Rihanna's back there? Was that your doing? So you turned all the other campers into a bunch of, like, zombie-looking Rihanna's? Is that it? I don't really know. I'm still not 100% sure that this is the killer, though. Unless if it's a different person that's imitating, um... Uh, Lena here, like, maybe the real Lena is somewhere else, and like, this is like some imposter, I don't know. I'm just guessing, you know, no clue. She shook the torch, and it flared out in a second. Wait here, that would be quick. Her devilish laughter came from behind me. That means she went after Masha. I must do something quickly. But I have absolutely no idea which way to run. The darkness completed this order. Screw it. I ran the way I assumed Lena went. Only if, after only a short way, I painfully smashed into a wall. I turned around trying to be slowly, but I stumbled over another obstacle, fell down, and screamed with pain. Trying to rise, I realized that I couldn't put any weight on my left leg. Seems like I twisted it. I tried to crawl, but it worked out badly. The whole my floor was covered with sharp stones, rusty nails, and broken boards. After only a short way, my arms were torn to bleeding pieces of meat, and my eyes couldn't uh, be open because of the dust of the sand. I gotta say, like, <laughs> I like how they get pretty graphic at times. The <laughs> text dialogue here is pretty interesting reading this. I fumbled in my pockets and pulled out the matchbox. I tried to light a match with my shaking hands, but couldn't get them to light. Calm down, calm down. I muttered. At last, after the fifth try, the mind was lightened by a dim light. I quickly oriented myself and worked out which way I had to go. It seemed to me that only a few seconds passed before I found myself in the room where I had left my. The last match went out, but I just had enough time to see uh, Lena raising her cleaver above Masha. Oh boy. I rushed towards them, screaming and dive forward. Are you going to get yourself killed here? My hand suddenly collided with something. I fell to the ground and began smashing everything around me. Oh man, you're going to get your heads cut off by the cleaver? Oh boy. Most of my punches didn't hit the mark, but then my hands met something soft. I heard a moan and dead silence set in. Oh boy. Rolled onto my back and started breathing heavily, inhaling the dry air greedily. Masha? I called. I heard quiet sobs. Are you still alive? Yes. She whispered. Did she get you? No. I began to fumble in the darkness and soon found a torch and a lighter. Okay. Shapeless shadows began to dance on the walls, and I saw Lena's body sprawled on the floor. She seemed to be alive. I was going to finish her. Down. Masha crawled right over to me and grabbed my leg. But we can't just... You don't need to. Of course, Lena wasn't the blame for everything. But you just saw her back there, right? But she's the devil incarnate. But we, you think she is, though. We still don't know if, it's the, if that... Is a different person or not? We don't know. That takes over her body, or if it really is uh, Lena. I guess all the time will tell as this goes along here. It's getting interesting, though. <laughs> There's no way we could let a human like her, if she could still be called a human, live. 
But when I looked at Basha, I realized that I can't. I just can't. I took up the cleaver from the floor and twisting it in my hands, I decided that I would make a perfect crowbar. It would make, I should say. Going over to the door, I jammed it into the wheel and pulled off as pulled on it as hard as I could. The door creaked and opened. Fresh air streamed into the room. We're saved. I returned to Masha, helped her to get up, and we left the room, leaving Lena lying unconscious. <clears throat> hmm. Beyond the door, there was a short corridor with a ladder at the end of it, which led up to a grating. I climbed up to pull it on it with all my strength. The grating fell down and with a crash, and we climbed out. I fell to the grass, exhausted, and looked around. Again, this square. Again, this camp. The bright red dawn was breaking in the east, burning the tops of a distant forest. The stars, uh, the last stars, winked at me, unaware of everything that had happened here in this hell. Masha rested her head on my shoulder and pointed up to the sky with a trembling hand. I wish we were there. Though we got out of dungeon, nothing is over. Crowds of zombie Oyanas are wandering through the camp and insane Lena is lying underneath and heaven knows how much more devilry we will encounter here. I really want to sleep. I didn't know how to answer her because I don't know where to run. Don't know where we could be safe. Don't know uh, how to return to our world. Well, whatever you do, just don't go back where you came from. That would be a, uh, the old camp back there. Obviously, that's not a good place to go for you because a lot of shit happens there. <laughs> Sleep. I patted Bosch's head. Listen, this would make a great script for a film. <laughs> boy, oh boy. All of you would probably think something like that. I still have some, I still have some questions there, Meek. Uh... Masha, uh, I still think you're the culprit, but uh, we'll save that for when we cross that bridge when we get to it. Because this is her route, after all. Like, it's not Lena's route or anybody else's route. I don't think it would make sense if Lena is the one who turned out to be the culprit here. But I'm curious to see where this is all going to go, though. I could be wrong, though. You know, I don't know. I'm just starting to think that all this is just one big setup. But if it's all if it's all fake too though, if this is just some prank that somebody is just playing on him the whole time, like I said, like there's so many ways they could go with this story. I don't know, but I'm just just see where it's gonna go, guys. I don't know. <laughs> she laughed out loud. I looked at her in horror, but I'm enjoying this though. Masha was smiling, but her smile wasn't diabolical like that one of Lena's. It was pure, honest, maybe even childish. That's where that the person could get you the most because one person is looking like a devil person, but maybe the person that's taken over her isn't even Lena. I don't know. All her exhaustion had gone away and her eyes were shining with a cheerful spark. What uh, happened to you? I could hardly speak. Everything is fine. She laid that on my shoulder again. That was the last scene. What? Suddenly I felt my strength leaving me.